the gods dead, I suppose I should turn my full attention to you. We shall see how far you can be pushed. Hello everyone, Canon Lowe here with another Path of Exile build guide. And this time, I will be showing off a Divine Ire build that is utilizing the Dorianis prototype unique item. And before I go any further, uh, all of the timestamps for the various sections of the guide will be in the video description. So, uh, with that taken care of... Doriani's prototype is a unique item that was released with the Harvest League, and it has some very interesting modifiers on it. It makes it so that nearby enemies have lightning resistance equal to yours, and the lightning resistance does not affect lightning damage taken. So the idea is to get your lightning resistance as low as possible while also having uh, armor 
because of the armor applies to damage taken from hits instead to kind of compensate and mitigate lightning damage that way. And some things that I never really thought of when I was making this build is that it has interactions of ignoring all of the modifiers that add to enemy resistances. It just flat out doesn't care. And I don't think it can be really used with uh, elemental equilibrium either, though I've never tried. So the downsides of this is that you have to have a lot of armor in order to mitigate all of that lightning damage. And when I was creating this build, I wanted to make something a little bit more unique, and I made this about a month ago is when I was trying it. I was actually going to use this as my league start for next league, but then uh, my friend Warmonger had plenty of harvest stuff to give me some pretty decent items, and I just decided to go with it as much as possible. Unfortunately, uh, I still don't have a super great staff or ring to show off today, but based on my uh, my other ring in the path of building get an idea of what I was going for so at the moment my l lightning resistance is negative 80 which is actually kind of on the lower end for Doriani's prototype builds and I thought not very many people were using Doriani's prototype I, I thought it was more of a very niche item and then as soon as I got far enough with Doriani's prototype, a lot of the bigger YouTubers uh, made build guides of uh, Cyclone, Cast on Crit, Melnir, Arc, Doriani's prototype builds, which are un undeniably better than this build, but I didn't want to make Cyclone, and I guess I never really thought of Melnir as well, I, I just wanted the laser beams. So with that negative 80% lightning resistance, it makes everything have negative 80. So that's how it works, in a nutshell. So for the gear, obviously Doriani's prototype, as best of uh, armor and energy shield mod, is probably more important than the life mod actually on this, because of how much armor you need. I decided to use a brine crown for the helmet. You can't be frozen, which is just a a quality of life, but the more important thing is is that you gain 1500 base armor while stationary, and also it reduces cold damage taken, which is just another kind of neat thing to have, as well as having decent armor for a helmet in and of itself. So for the amulet, I have a crit chance, crit multi, and physical as extra lightning damage mod, as well as the plus one level of all lightning skill gems. The ring that is actually, that has the harvest mods on it, uh, has crit chance, just defenses pretty much, and as well as the lightning damage per power charge, because they do utilize power charges on this. So for boots, Tailwind, if you want Elusive, you can get uh, Elusive Boots as well. And then for the belt, just Defenses. Though, honestly, an Immortal Flesh belt is better at pretty much everything. If you can have the resistances good enough to compensate for that lowered all res. For the gloves... Uh, unnerve is quite handy, and then I needed some extra dexterity, as well as the resist and life and everything. So this is a pretty poor ring that I have. It has decent life and some resist, but nothing else going for it. And then the staff, cast speed, lightning damage to spells, as well as just spell damage. So for the rings... If you get good vendors gambles, which reduce lightning resistance but increase your other two resistances, those are probably the best in slot if you're going for full on damage. But I do think that if you get much higher than like 125%, 150%, I do feel that lowering your resistance even lower than that does definitely have diminishing returns 
but at the same time I haven't really tried that. So in my mind it would be really hard to cap out your other resists if you're going to do that because most instances where it lowers resistance it lowers all resistance instead of just one. Vendor's Gamble is pretty much one of the few uh, unique items that do that as far as I am aware. So for the flasks I have a Onslaught flask for movement speed, Quicksilver for more movement speed, I was going to switch this out for a Bottled Faith if I had it available for the more expensive option for the maximum damage. And it's actually very useful because when I go into the Ascendancy uh, in just a bit, one of the modifiers for this Ascendancy with a Scion is that you gain Consecrated Ground when you hit a rare unique enemy, but there's a catch to it it only creates that consecrated ground underneath the enemy that you hit. So if you want to take advantage of actual consecrated ground effects, having a on-demand uh, on flask for that is quite handy. So just a normal sulfur flask will also do for that slot, or pretty much whatever you want. And then I just have physical damage reduction and armor flasks. And of course my Abyssal Flask had 69% armor because reasons. And then a Life Flask. So going into the Ascendancy, the big things are I chose to do the Inquisitor for the Crit Multi. Damage Pen, which isn't really useful to be honest with Doriani's prototype build. You lower the resistance of enemies so much that unless you have even higher damage pen, doesn't do much. And then, like I said, the, the Consecrated Ground, when you hit a enemy, from my experience, it pretty much spawns where the boss or rare enemy is. So it's good for getting that plus 100% crit chance, but if you want immunity to those elemental ailments, it can be a bit awkward. And then nearby enemies take increased lightning damage is very good with the Doriani's prototype setup. And then I chose uh, Assassin for the Eternal Labyrinth for the crit chance, but primarily for the power charge on critical strike, which is much more helpful than on kill. And then also the elusive. So I get free elusive from the Assassin part here. And I did get Path of the Templar, and literally all of my skill tree branches off from the Templar starting point as soon as I uh, refunded all of the points from the middle after I got that. So, in complete honesty, if you do a Templar build, you will probably have a better time than playing a Scion with the setup that I have. Granted, yeah, I get free elusive, but if you can get elusive boots and stuff, I'm really confident that playing an Inquisitor will have better performance than a Scion here. So with that, let's get into the links. So the D Divine Ire is linked with Awakened Added Lightning Damage, Awakened Elemental Focus, which I'll get into with Stormbrand in a bit here. Increased critical strikes because I don't have a bottled faith. Uh, my crit chance isn't as high as I would like, so I have that in there. Um, if you want to convert all of your lightning damage, the physical to lightning damage gem pretty much does it by itself, I think. So you don't need to worry about the deal no non-lightning damage from Doriana's prototype mod. So currently I am actually doing 25% less damage than I would otherwise because I didn't convert all of it and that is because I don't have uh I don't have the watcher's eye that I would have liked that converted the rest of it. It's just not something that I really uh I really tried to do because it was the end of the league. And infused channeling for Taking reduced physical and lightning damage is really nice, as well as the more damage. And then inspiration to reduce the mana cost as well as 
both the crit chance and the more elemental damage is quite nice on this, actually. So for the auras, Wrath, Herald of Thunder, Discipline, or Vol Discipline is even better, uh, and Enlighten. My have Stormbrand, Curse on Hit, Essas in the Mark, which is the pretty much the only offensive curse that is useful. Unfortunately, though, since it is a mark after the curse rework in Heist, it might not work very well because it only affects one target, and I'm really not sure how that's going to work. So you might want to switch this out for something completely different. And I haven't looked at all the curses well enough to really know what would even fit there. But as of right now, before those changes, Assassin's Mark was the way to go. And then I have Innervate support. Innervate is surprisingly really good on this. I didn't think that Stormbrand would do enough damage to actually kill enemies on its own, but against white, enem white mob enemies, Innervate procs pretty consistently and it lasts 8 seconds. So while you're clearing a map, you pretty much get this up all the time as long as you cast one every so often when you find new mobs. So that is really handy. The other two links on this, I was going to add stuff like Culling Strike to proc Innervate, but honestly that is completely unnecessary. And then uh, I don't remember what the last link was. I think it was a second curse with a Awakened Curse on Hit for like Enfeeble or Temp Chains if you want some more survivability. So for Flame Dash, I have Arcane Surge, Faster Casting, and Second Wind to make it feel as comfortable as possible. And then for the last links, I have Molten Shell, Cast and Damage Taken, Vol, Righteous Fire for a little bit of extra damage, and Increased Duration to make Vol, Righteous Fire actually worth using. So, in my offhand, I just have a Portal with as much casting mods as possible, and honestly, Portal feels really good with high cast speed, and not needing a, a Portal Skull is a pretty good quality of life. So without further ado, let's get into the Path of Building. Alright, getting into the Path of Building. So this is the pathing for what I have planned and also this uh, I have two different variations of this and I will have both of them in the video description so uh, with leveling I pretty much went um, I think I might have I'm not entirely sure um, what I did I think I went up this way and then tried to allocate down here to get as well of uh, as close as I wanted for the end game one as possible. Leveling a Scion is pretty awkward, especially with the Labyrinth, that you get a bonus every other Labyrinth instead of every Labyrinth. So, there's that. And how we get the resistances lower is that I have a Thread of Hope and a perfect negative Immortal Flesh, which I wouldn't think would be actually that hard. And Immortal Flesh, having the increased armor will not affected by elemental ailments is really useful with the mod from the Inquisitor Ascendancy, because you are immune to elemental ailments on the Consigure ground, and especially if you have a Sulfur Flask on demand, you get that increased armor all the time. And then it also reduces physical damage taken from attacks, which is also useful. So those are pretty much the two ways. And with the Thread of Hope, I get Divine Wrath to convert 25% of the lightning damage. And then the Watcher's Eye converts the rest of it. Or the planned Watcher's Eye, that is. And then Divine Judgment to add even more damage. Sanctum of Thought is really nice for the extra damage and reduced effect of curses and the reduced damage from critical strikes. Just a good quality of life one. Sign uh, singular Focus increases the effect of 
infusion, so with the channeling damage you also take less damage from physical and lightning, which is really nice. And then arcane compactor is just to increase the effect of arcane surge, and it was only one point on here, so pretty simple. The other thing that you can do is have a thread of hope either here or here, depending on which is more uh, more skill point efficient. Um, in my other plan I have it in here, but I'll show that in, in a minute. So with the Inquisitor Ascendancy, what would be a good idea is to pick the Pious Path, um, uh, Augur of Pentance, and Righteous Providence. So this is, increases your the enemy crit chance and crit multi, and this is pretty useless for inevitable judge, judgment for obvious reasons. And then uh, Augury of Pentance is just a better version of the Scion stuff, and then you get uh, more stuff for uh, Consecrated Ground. and. If you choose the Inquisitor, you don't need to worry about elemental ailments at all, I do believe. Or maybe I am mistaken? Yes, grants immunity to elemental ailments, okay. So I would say definitely uh, the Inquisitor, now that I'm actually looking at it, is still better than the Scion. But I wanted to try something different, I never really leveled a Scion before. So it was pretty much a learning experience, and to be honest, I don't really plan on making any more uh, Scions unless it's for a very specific thing. So for here, uh, like I mentioned before, the Inquisitor or the Assassin uh, for the ones that I chose, but honestly the Elementist is better than the Assassin at the end of the day because of the cannot retake cannot take a uh, reflected elemental damage is very nice, as well as the shocks from your hits, which means from Stormband for me, uh, always deal a increased damage of 10%. And then it also does 10% elemental uh, resistance pen, which is actually high enough to be a little bit more meaningful. But like I said, I wanted something that would do power charges. If you do power charges for Stormbrand, the power charge on crit, that is an easy way of doing that. So yeah, I just had Culling Strike and then Awaken Curse on Hit and Enfeeble. So honestly, I would do power charge on critical if, uh, if you don't want that if you don't want the assassin. So there is that. So looking at the damage numbers with the channeling, I have th theoretically 3 million. And then releasing at 20 stages, I do 10 million average damage. Which is good. The, the damage is definitely there. But I have uh, actually made theoretical builds on paper that have done 20 million <laughs> with all the buffs on. So I kind of feel like the damage isn't quite as good as I would like, especially for end games and if you want to do uh, super bosses and stuff like Sirius and w whatever the, the league boss is. Typically you need pretty high damage or survivability for that. And as for the armor, the armor I have definitely had problems with for high for high tier maps, the red maps. It is really difficult to get high enough armor, or at least with the setup that I have given myself, to gain enough armor to not die from really heavy hitting elemental, uh, heavy hitting lightning hits because of how armor makes it so that bigger hits are makes your armor less effective and that is really kind of the most disappointing thing is that 
in the lower levels, it feels really amazing, and then once you get to the higher levels where stuff, especially when you have really dangerous damaging mods, it's it gets pretty ridiculous at times. So if you can find a way to gain much more armor with the setup that I have, or with your own setup, by all means, I think you're definitely going to have uh, a much better time than I have been having uh, with the end game stuff. So for the staff, because I didn't have a completed staff, have crit chance for spells, crit multi, plus three level of all lightning spell gems, and gain f physical as extra lightning, which is a shaper mod or crusader mod, I do believe. And then the other ring that I wanted, having lightning damage leeches life, is definitely a really good survival option. So I would recommend getting that if you can. So the other version with the two thread of hopes, hopes, you have one right here. And that way you can get Whispers of Doom, which is actually incorrect because they're moving Whispers of Doom over here. So I'm just going to go ahead and unallocate that convert that. So now this Thread of Hope here is a lot less useful. And you can get a little bit of extra crit chance from Thunderous Salvos, if you so desire. Or just use the Thread of Hope like right here or something uh, to maybe get Heart of Thunder and then put three points into like Crackling Speed or something along those lines. Or maybe even Static Blows. However you want to do it. So yeah, overall, as an as an experiment of something that I've never used or thought of before, and especially playing a character that I've more or less never played before, it has been surprisingly really good. Uh, like I said in one, one of my earlier videos that showcased this at the beginning of leveling, trying out this item, it, uh, it has been pretty much the only build that I've been able to do content the same level as my character without being over too overleveled or having great difficulty. But when I got to red maps and started trying those out, like I said, the armor that I have, which on here says 26,000, um, in game it says uh, more like 18,000. It just hasn't been enough to really mitigate enough of that lighting damage if there's dangerous mods on there. So mods like uh, damage as extra lightning, crit multi, or just flat monster damage are very dangerous mods for this build. And uh, unless you have, unless you found ways to increase the armor enough to make that not as much of an issue. I'm not sure how, how much I can recommend this. Uh, definitely, like I said at the very beginning, th builds that I've seen that use the Melnir cast on critical hit uh, arc builds with Doriani's prototype are probably better in in most situations. But I wanted my laser beams. <laughs> So, th this is what I ended up with. And for the last point, uh, I'm not entirely sure where I would even put it. Um, maybe even Divine Fury, because you get um, physical damage as extra fire. I'm not sure how the fire spells have physical converted to fire would work. But hey, Path of Building says it's an extra 85k. <laughs> DPS. So there's that. So whichever version you want to look at, um, I'll put in parentheses which one has the two thread of hopes and which one has the uh, immortal flesh on it. So with that, um, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you've uh, my build guide has piqued your interest, and have a happy. <laughs> hopefully enjoyable uh, league start for heist so with that thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day